Kyle Keller, Stephen F. Austin, head coach, joins us now. How much sleep have you had, coach? Uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 got out of there late last night, and and uh, you know we had a lot of different things to do, and and then we flew into Tyler, Texas. I don't know, not sure if you know where that is, and that's about. We had some fans that, that greeted us there at the airport, and and uh, then it's about an hour and a half from Nacogdoches, and I've been rolling ever since I got home. So uh, I'm going to go recruiting here in a little bit. So I haven't had a chance to get any sleep yet. Oh, it's a good time to go. It. Good time to go recruiting after that win against Duke. Okay, if I said to you 24 hours ago, hey, you're going to beat Duke in overtime, what would you have said? Honestly, what would you have said? If it's not on the radio, it's just privately, and, I, and I'm talking to you. Um, what do I have to give up to make that happen? Besides <laughs> my wife and kids, <laughs> you know that uh, uh, you know they're obviously that's a, a far fetched deal for for everybody. But um, you know, in, 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 as a coach and players, you go into expecting to win, but the, the general public says they got no shot, right, Dan? I mean, come on, you know, it's realistically they hadn't lost in how many years at home to in a non conference game and. You know, somebody's telling me this. They've lost to a non-power five since like '83, so that's why you know Coach Sus- Coach is the gold standard. I mean, he doesn't let his team slip, and but we caught him at the right time. What was that pregame speech like last night? It was it was just you know be yourself, you know, and and just be who we are, and and you know I told him I said hey you know because I really gave my best spiel at him the night before. But but it was just, hey, be ourselves, just go out there. Because in our league, we're, I'm not going to say we're Duke, but in our league, everybody gives us our best shot. And, and so I said for the first time, we really this year, there's no pressure on you guys. All the pressure is on them. Just go out there and have fun, play together, play connected, and, and, and just enjoy the moment. And try not to look up at all the people that are going to be staring at you and <laughs> yelling bad things at you and just have fun with each other. And because at home, all the pressure and where we go around our league, all the pressure is on us. And one of the few times in the year where we can go out there and just play pressure free. And I think that's a great point because, you know, as you're saying, look, we're not Duke on a national stage, but in our conference, in our league, we are Duke. We're, we're the team that everybody gears up for. So your players know what that feeling is, where you have to, where we judge you on how much you won by. Not that you won, but it's like, oh, you only won by seven, you know, Hundred percent. Coach K has had that for the last thirty years, where we're going. Oh, forty years. Oh, yes. What happened? You struggled. You only won by nineteen. Yeah, a lot it was of pressure. A bad night. Yeah, hundred percent. I put up. Actually, I gave our guys blind draw stats, our stats versus their stats. That one of the things I did the night before the game, and they're remarkably pretty similar. And before the game, I said, "You tell me whose stats are whose." And, you know, I said, guys, they're no different than us. You know, I didn't, you know, I mean, my guy, thankfully, my guys, they, they don't go to Duke, so they ain't as smart as their guy. <laughs> you know, they couldn't figure that out. But so, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I said, tell me who's who. I said, guys, we, we don't go in there, we're going to win. I said, we do what they do. We play pressure defense. We play fast. We rebound the heck out of it. And I said, we're going to find out who can do it better tomorrow night. And we're going to will ourselves to do it better. And, you know, I didn't want to tell them they've got lottery picks here and, and, and first round draft picks and McDonald's all Americans and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it just, it just worked out. Any thought to, you know, calling a timeout, you know, when Bain gets that layup, like, would, is he instructed he gets the steal, but is he instructed to just go and play or was there any thought of a timeout? Dan, I'm looking down at a guy who's won 1,200 games. Am I going to outcoach him? <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't want him to have a clipboard. I mean, okay. you know, that's, that was not even a remote of thought. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I talked to the guys before the game. It's crazy, and the guys brought it up after the game. But I, I, I thought their pressure defense would really affect us. And I told them if they got stuck with the ball – with four or five seconds, I said, just drive that thing as hard as you can to the rim versus casting up a three-point shot because of their pressure defense. I said, try to draw a foul, try to draw something. You have plenty of time. I said, we go end-to-end in five seconds, you know, a couple of times a week. And 
they Bain told me after the game was over, he said, Coach, that's all I thought about when I got that ball. Is I go in the end and lay it up. I got plenty of time. Yeah. And that's the first time he's ever listened to me. <laughs> me. What was the uh, post game celebration like in the locker room? Uh, you know, it's for us at this level, it was it's it's what we live for. I mean, it's euphoric. It's you know, a lot of Gatorade, a lot of water. Unfortunately I got it we ran out of water, so by the time I got in there was a lot of ice and um, I found out watching it over and over again. My wife continues to show me I have a lot less hair than what I thought I had on the top <laughs> of my head when it's wet. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, it was it was uh, that's what we live for at this level. You know, I spent 18 years at Oklahoma State and at Kansas and A and M, and you don't get those locker room celebrations unless you advance deep in the in the tournament or win a conference championship and, and, and that you're not supposed to. And you really don't get them a conference championship, just going to Final Four or something like that. So here you live for them. You know, that's what makes this level great. It was fun to see. Congrats, Coach. And yeah, uh, thanks. Good luck. You know, Dan, you and I, I, we met once before. You won't remember it. But you, you made a great impression on me how kind a man you were. When you were working at another network at ESPN, you, you came and did – uh, Sunday night conversation with Mr. Ibo and I was, a Oh my goodness. Yes. And you were so kind. You kind of hung out with me and a couple of other guys at Eskimo Joe's and I was working for Leonard Hamilton at the time and you were so kind. And so to every person that you met and what a great person you are in this profession, what you've done for sports, but I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you, you know, 30 years later, whatever. It's, it's a group to 29 years later, whatever. But I appreciate it. That's, you that's, made a, quite an impression upon me. And I appreciate you doing something on Mr. Ibo. Yeah, Hank Ibo was this basketball legend. He was the coach of the U.S. Olympic team that lost to the Russians. And I never, I just didn't want him to be thought of as the coach who lost to the Russians, lost the gold medal game. And he was, you know, this unbelievable figure. And I went out and did a Sunday conversation with him. I think we played basketball at uh, Iba Gallagher Arena. We had a pickup yeah, basketball. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. also, when we went to Eskimo Joe's, which was the bar in town, I think I went with Mike Gun. Uh, was Mike Gundy there and Coach Pat Jones? Does that yes. sound? That's right. And I remember we were doing shots of 151 rum, <laughs> and the bar caught on fire, and nobody was concerned that the bar caught on fire that day. How's my uh, how's my memory there, Coach? It, pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, if it, you know, eventually in the cold or something's gonna, you know, the wind's gonna blow it the other direction, or you know, that's how it's supposed to be. And there was a young assistant coach by the name of Bill Self, yeah. on Leonard's staff at that time, who kind of made some of himself. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, or not. yeah, he seems to. Have, you've gone through an awful lot, though, Kyle. You know, we, yeah. you know, the story with Oklahoma State, the plane crash, and yeah. you, you know, you're an assistant for a long, long time, and you get this opportunity. So, you know, congrats to you because yeah. this is a this is a business of persevering and being told no, probably. But uh, you know, it's a big win, and I know you got to the tournament. Uh, I think you played Texas Tech uh, last year, right? Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. We've had a lot of fun. We're the winningest program in the state. We've had a lot of fun the last decade. So, All right, if you wake up, here. you Thanks. might have to be reminded that you beat Duke last night, okay? So when you wake up, just have your wife say, yes, you did beat Duke last night. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me Thank on. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, safe travels. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.